Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. I'm Himani. I am a project engineer with Wipro's Open Source Program Office. And today I'll be talking about how we can migrate data from Splunk to the Elastic Stack. Let's move on to the agenda. First, we'll have an overview of the migration approach, following which we'll have a look at how the methods for migrating historical data work. And then we'll have the migrating real-time data methods. And in the end, we'll be looking at the results. So let's begin with the migration approach. Splunk is an observability platform. And in any use case, it must be ingesting data from data sources. This data can be classified into historical data and real-time data, where real-time data is the existing data flow. So the migration approach is to intercept both these kinds of data into Logstash and then to Elasticsearch. Now, looking at the methods for migrating historical data, there are various methods depending on the volume of data. When the volume is low, the simplest method is to use Splunk Web UI, wherein uh, we can import the data into a JSON or CSV file and then we can ingest it into Logstash and Elasticsearch. It's basically a one-click methods method, so it's the easiest. While for high volume data, uh, the most stable method that Splunk documentation talks about is using the CLI. So like you can see here, we are basically uh, giving a search command wherein we can specify the time window we want to export the data uh, data and we can also specify the format for the output it could be raw data it could be json and we're basically telling splunk to uh, write all the query data into a file so that we can later ingest into ingest it into logstash now uh, since uh, we have the logs written to files, we can configure Logstash to uh, read the data from the files. And the path we can specify in the input plugin. And we can also specify any grok patterns inside the filter plugin. And in the output plugin, we obviously give the Elasticsearch nodes. It could be multiple nodes if it's a cluster. That's how we migrate the historical data. In case of real-time data, what we need is to use Splunk forwarders to redirect the data from Logstash to, uh, I'm sorry, from Splunk to Logstash. There are two kinds of data, uh, Splunk forwarders. One is the heavy forwarder, which structures the data before forwarding it. And the other one is the universal forwarder, which forwards raw data and is hence faster. In this use case, I have worked on syslog data and Splunk documentation recommends using a heavy forwarder for the same. So that's what we'll be using uh, and looking at in the next few slides. Also, heavy forwarder is nothing but a Splunk enterprise instance. So to configure Splunk to send the data to a port, this is what the content for the outputs config file would be. We are basically telling Splunk to send the data on port 520, and we'll be configuring Logstash to listen on the same port. Also, inside the filter plugin in, uh, of the Logstash config file, we want to mention uh, a grok pattern which would specifically match the syslog data or any uh, log data that we are going to be using. Also, we want to drop all the events that are not really needed. That is the events or the logs that are being generated as audit logs or internal logs inside Splunk. Yeah. So we are omitting those uh, using the grok pass failure in Logstash. So finally, this is what the result looks like. It's basically structured data that's being ingested into Elasticsearch, and we can have mean, extract meaningful um, fields from this data and create visualizations. One such visualization is 
this one. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, like to point out that this is merely a small scale representation of the greater migration, which includes a lot of processes like planning, designing your cluster, and even training your team. So this uh, the aim was just to implement a small scale end-to-end -end atomic migration, which uh, just to show that is achievable. So thank you for listening. You can con uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and you can check out some articles that I've written on Medium. Thank you.